Okay, so I guess now that it's almost been a week since CS 2019 started and it's already over, it would be at some point time to actually make some product videos, which is what I'm going to do today. And I know it doesn't matter so much anymore at this point in time, but I didn't get to it earlier. And if you want my opinion on it, yeah, then that's your time still. Now, one little bit of a disclaimer, and I know I shouldn't do it, but still for those people who maybe didn't get it, so they are maybe sour afterwards. The trip to CS was pretty much fully sponsored with the flight at the hotel from Dell. And that's why the only extra treatment they, that I will give them will be an extra video for their products and everything else will be covered in one other big video. But that's the only special treatment that they will get because they won't get any better remarks from my point and I won't give them any preferential treatment for the reviews. So that's just not how I work. And that's why I would say... I'm gonna cover the things that I found mostly interesting and a few things just a little bit on the top, but I didn't really make much video and you will see why maybe in a second because that's what I told them. The conditions in the showroom weren't all that perfect because the lighting was just way so dim and that's why also most of my shots are also blurry so I had to take them also. I don't really have that much footage, but I can tell you a lot. So let's actually start off with the first thing which is actually already kind of my highlight for one reason that you will see pretty quickly. Now when I open it, yes, this it is. It is the stylus in the hinge and I mean, Packing a, a pen in the hinge is actually very important because this way you can exit it if you use it as a clamshell laptop or also, which you can see here, it is still secured, but when you actually put it then into tablet mode, it is still accessible. So in both modes that you actually would use it, you can access it. And this is actually quite a big thing. And what they, for example, told me that you can obviously store a pen quite easily in a device, but then it's usually a smaller one. As far as I know, actually Lenovo has a quite good pen also included in the device, but I think definitely this solution works out quite well. And what we have here, for example, especially compared to the XPS 13, we have Type A ports and so on. And I would actually say one reason why I like this laptop so much, or at least it seems so far like it, definitely have to see it in the review process, is that it seems fairly priced, starts at around 800 euros, is available in a 4K version, also 1080p for those who want that. Build quality got way better compared to the previous ones because it got noticeably closer to the XPS line. Obviously, that one is still more compact, has the bigger battery, and it's just a little bit more sturdy. But it felt really good, the keyboard was good, the layout was fine, we had all the important ports. Okay, maybe we have some bigger bezels at the bottom, which we will see why this device after all is still bigger than XPS 13. But what I've actually noticed, when I didn't have the XPS 13 side by side, this didn't feel big at all. You only then, because of the XPS 14 being so incredibly compact, then notice that this one is just bigger. But the rest build quality was fine. We also have the fingerprint reader in the power button, which you can see, pretty handy solution. So in terms of functionality, versatility, since this is also a two-in-one device, this is pretty, pretty appealing. So this is what I meant. This is the difference compared to the XPS 13, and sorry for the footage. But as you can see, in terms of thickness, it's pretty similar, but it's about like maybe a centimeter and a half, just, or maybe a centimeter. It's a little bit hard to tell. I would have to check the actual specs, didn't really bother so much. It's just deeper, and you will see why in just a second, actually, if we skip ahead a little bit which I should do on the right screen. <laughs> so here you can see, this was the difference. I should show it once again, I think. No, I didn't. Okay, <laughs> let's just go back then. This is, this is the difference that you can see. But I have it in a picture as well later on. So it's a little bit taller to the bottom. This is, this is that. I mean, yeah, obviously a little bit more bezel. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about it, so let's get to the next thing that I have a video of, which is then my last video already. The Dell Latitude 14 7000. Now this is supposed to be the um, most compact business style device in, in this form factor. The only thing that I've noticed at first is that it seems, as you can see here with those beveled edges, quite sharp. I mean, this is something that I think I'll notice at first and after a day or two you won't notice it because you don't really do that much with a laptop in your hand and it wasn't like razor sharp or so. But yeah, I'm a little bit concerned usually about those beveled edges because once you maybe bump them up, they look a little bit nasty. But other than that, one thing that I've also noticed, but I asked them actually is it doesn't seem like a Latitude lap, um, keyboard. 
And they said, no, they made no compromise. It's the same travel. It's the same feedback and everything else. It just looks different. So they changed the design on the latitudes. Maybe we already had a few in the past, but the ones that I usually use look completely different. It's also a two-in-one device. As you can see, very small bezels. It has the fingerprint reader. It has even an, a sensor that sees when you approach the device and so on. Windows, hello. Yeah, micro SD card only, but it felt very high quality. And I definitely think it might be what they said, actually, one of the prettiest um, business devices, because usually they don't look that great. And especially if you've seen previous latitudes, they didn't look all that pretty. If that's actually something that important, I don't know, but everything felt really high quality. So this could be one of the better ones, especially since I always liked the latitude series. Maybe not so much for build quality or design, but the keyboards were great. They used good displays. The speakers got better over time. And here, for example, with the Inspiron that I've already talked about, it's still noticeably smaller. So this is closer to an XPS for sure. And that is definitely something quite nice to see. Especially what I like is that it looks way more kind of stylish now with the brushed aluminum look. Here you can see it once again with the XPS 13. So it's wider, obviously, but it's all 14 inches, especially if you open it up now, you will see that it isn't much bigger, even though this display got even bigger. As you can see, it's obviously a little bit taller. But this is, this is not much. So they did a really great job in making it compact. So let me actually now get through my picks. So this, once again, is the 13. I, I mean... I like the pen. The pen actually is also a pretty good one. I like that one. It feels, yeah, actually quite soft. So it doesn't feel like plastic on, on glass. You can see the specs here. You get a typical, now the most modern processor, the most recent one and so on and so forth. This is the 15 inch version, definitely bigger. And you can see they actually cramped a whole num keypad here as well inside. I personally don't really need a num, num keypad on a laptop, but yeah, it definitely looks sleek as well. The 15 inch also pretty small bezels. Build quality, like I said, was pretty good. You can access the pen. Now about the Dell Express 13, I'm actually not gonna talk that much about it because the, the only big thing that you might maybe call out is that they now, as you can see here, have got rid of the nose cam and now we have a proper webcam. But one thing that actually disappointed me a little bit when I said to them, yeah, but it said we don't have Windows Hello and the guys there told me, no, it does have Windows Hello. Yeah, but it does not have. So I think they should have a little better background information on their own devices because the latitude has the sensor, the proximity sensor has the Windows Hello cam and so on. The XPS 13 just has this tiny camera. So yeah, that's that. Keyboard, they improved definitely over the previous ones. I don't think that this one is better than last year's one, but, but that one already was noticeably better than the first XPS 13 ones, which I didn't like so much. Then once again, this is the latitude. I mean, the keyboard felt fine. It's just a little bit odd to have a different design, but I guess since it, everything is the same, you should be getting quite used to it. And the ports, yeah, you get pretty much everything that you need. As you can see also with the SC card reader, small bezels, so that's that. Now let's get into a few things that I'm not gonna cover that much since I just don't make gaming laptop reviews because they take up too much time, even though, yeah, especially the, the, the newer ones sound really good. Because here, for example, the G7, 144 hertz display. It looked quite stylish, actually quite thin and compact. Build quality was fine. Keyboard looked nice. Everything, we have a lot of ports. And as you can see on the sides here, a proper SD card reader also. And, so, and you even have ports on the back. So you're fully covered in terms of ports, which you should be on a gaming laptop after all. Then, for example, we had the M15 with a 240 hertz display pretty unique thing big battery obviously great processors and so on and they definitely look great but since i haven't reviewed ever one i can't really tell you that much about that and i'm not sure if i'm going to do that just like i said they take up so much time those reviews especially the way i would like to do it and then i still don't think that i cover the things that gamers would like to see but this i guess was the highlight here the alienware area 51m why because it uses, first of all, things like, for example, 2.5 gigahertz Ethernet. Then it has Toby eye tracking. But definitely the highlight is that it uses a desktop grade CPU. And this thing is fully modular. It has the RTX already, G GTX line. 
you can upgrade the GPU, you can upgrade the CPU, and you can even overclock it. You have all the ports that you might want to get. You get a pretty nice keyboard, as you can see, a good layout, a num keypad, macro buttons, obviously RGB lighting, which is something that everything needs. The bezels are pretty small. Obviously, the whole device itself is pretty big, as you can see here, because, I mean, yeah, this is desktop performance, pretty much. I'm actually curious to see or I would like to know how big the difference is compared to a real desktop CPU, especially since you can overclock it. But the cooling is supposed to be really good. It didn't really improve over the last one because it said it's, it was already good enough, but you can see the ports on the back. This, for example, on the G7. Now, the next product that I would like to have because I'm a fan of the, the monitors is this one, actually. 27-inch Quad HD, super thin as you can see usb type c already not that i actually could use that all that much yet but it obviously still has the normal ports not that many though but it's super thin and yeah this <laughs> would be cool but I, I guess that won't be affordable because this is their 49 inch and as you can see here dual quad hd so pretty much 5k in terms of width with 5120 by 1440 so this is noticeably sharper than sharper than what um Samsung had last year with theirs, so 32 by 9. So it pretty much replaces two Quad HD 27-inch monitors side by side. Super compelling, but I guess also super <laughs> pricey. Obviously height adjustable and so on. All the ports that you might want to have. Pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. Now, this was kind of one of their highlights, which was the 55-inch, 120Hz, 4K gaming monitor. The one thing that I just don't quite am so sure about is... 120 hertz with 4k <laughs> who's gonna push that i mean i guess you definitely need an sli for that or something like that but i mean this bell looked nice and as you can see here oled great coverage 120 hertz is so nice nice stand quite thin for what it is for a monitor and it looks pretty nice it definitely comes down to how good the quality is actually and i <laughs> asked them if there will be a 65 inch version they didn't say anything yet i mean it's possible for a monitor extreme but i mean nvidia has something similar but this is oled and 120 hertz so not quite comparable which actually already leads me away from my pictures but i still want to get to that monitor what i've asked them actually but also in an interview if you've maybe seen that from with justin Lyles, i wanted to know if since one big difference compared to a monitor and the tv is that usually tvs just look better when it comes to videos because monitors don't have, have the extra graphics pro or video processing to make it look nicer and obviously you don't want that on a gaming monitor you want pretty much everything off obviously on a proper tv you can do this as well but i think especially if you watch video content it's definitely nice to have some extra enhancements i mean i usually turn off most of them in either but sometimes it's nice to use this may, maybe like low or medium not really much more than that and you can enhance the improvement because whenever i had a, a monitor here it never looked nearly as good for video content like a TV does. So that's the one bit difference. And when I asked them if this will have something to do with that, they said since they are still working on it, they don't really know just yet if they will include it or not. My guess is that they won't really because putting an extra video chip into it is something completely different because this is a monitor. So it doesn't have a tune or anything like that. And it just is pretty much focused towards gamers. So I would definitely like to have a little bit of a integration of a tv feature as well in terms of those enhancements i don't think it will come a little bit of a bummer but if you mostly game and use your windows on it it won't be an issue but that would have definitely raised my appeal a lot uh, more then let's quickly actually go through everything that we had in case you didn't want to watch everything so like i said alienware i'm not gonna cover much this year because gaming laptops just too much work for me even though i would like it but then i would just have to miss out on so many other reviews but all the laptops seemed nice especially the fully upgradable one that one looks pretty interesting and since it is a normal desktop cpu it definitely will be fully upgradable i'm not so sure about those graphics cards because it's not a standard graphic card that you can put in so that's where they actually have to also push up these upgrades now like i said inspiron 13 7000 i like the pen and the hinge proof premium build quality so it got closer to the xpl obviously it's still not there but you also don't pay it as much as so fine oh, over a versatile so, um, um, so all rounder but the one thing that i did not like so much is the speaker at the bottom because i mean one explanation was if you use in tablet mode then you need it also firing towards you then it would fire it but if they would have had it side mounted with 
I think that would have been possible. So that's one thing that I think won't be all that great on this one. But if the speaker is good enough, especially if you use it on the desk anyways, then it shouldn't be an issue, but still, I think. Now, the Alex Bass 13, no nose cam anymore, but also no Windows Hello. No, it doesn't. And otherwise, not much different. So pretty much a small refresh. I'm not that hyped about that. The Latitude 14 7000, like I said, a little bit sharp, but it looks definitely stylish. For a business device especially, keyboard looks and feels a little bit different, but it's supposed to be absolutely the same. They made no compromise on that. That's what they said. It's not an option. And two-in-one pen, compact, but you get all the ports. So pretty nice. One thing that I actually didn't talk about yet is Dell Mobile Connect, because that's something that they will push out with all their current devices, but you can also get it on some older ones. This is actually a pretty cool thing. And I saw a demo. I made a video, but I had to delete it for some reason because, yeah, storage issues. <laughs> You get, if you connect it with your phone, and it works with Android, I'm not quite so sure about iOS actually, but it definitely works with Android, with every Android phone, you get all your notifications on your Dell device. This is pretty cool and it works with everything. Now, the one thing that you can also do though is wirelessly mirror your phone. And it was a pretty small delay when they had it on demo. So you could, for example, even play some games on it on your device that doesn't really need that, where the delay isn't really an issue. So that's something to keep in mind. But it's cool if you want to just use your phone, but you don't have it in reach or you just work on your PC and you want to cover that. So very seamlessly convenient way but what I would actually like to have this as maybe a paid app on the store because what they especially did in terms of notifications and how normally it looked, it looked like just you would get normal notifications on your Windows device, which you usually don't get. And I would like to have this on a non-Dell device, like on especially my desktop, which just isn't a Dell or even on a laptop and so on. So I think they made probably something, something pretty nice, but I would actually like to see them maybe license that to others. Because, yeah, I mean, Windows is trying something similar to that, but it's nowhere near that seamlessly integrated and so on. So that was pretty much it. 17 minutes about. I hope you liked it. I mean, obviously, these are all hands-on videos. I just have to mention that. I'm usually not a big fan of hands-on videos because you don't really get the time to properly try things. I mean, I've checked the displays and, I mean, obviously, all those displays will be very good. It just depends on how good. The speakers, definitely something you can't judge. Keyboards. I mean, the XPS, I know it's pretty much the same. The Latitude, I know, and I know the one from the Inspiron, so all of those are fine, but it's just not the same as having a proper review device here. So all of this, what I've said, is just speculation at this point. I, I can, for example, even though I think the Latitude for 14 7000 will be a great device, I can say for sure. I mean, the, the chances are high since all the previous ones were already great, but this one is a little bit of a bigger differentiation to what they had before, also with the 13 7000 Inspiron. Kind of my highlight, but it might might be turn out, turning out that maybe the speaker is just completely bad or the battery life is pretty poor, especially with the 4K version or similar things. So that's why I'm going to definitely review the Inspiron 13 7000, the, 40, the Latitude and the new XPS maybe also as well just to also see how the most recent SOC or processors actually deliver battery life and so on. Alienware, like I said, I'm not going to do. What I would like to review is definitely some of their monitors, but usually they don't have review units for those. So that's pretty much that with my coverage for Dell. And like I said, everything else will be covered in one more long video that will cover everything that I saw, which actually isn't that much. And I will time code it, so don't worry about that. But other than that, yeah, that's it. Okay, on the next time, bye.